Okay, today in Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to show you how you can create um, this paper cutout effect. Um, this could be used to do lots of neat things, but it looks really cool on the screen. It looks 3D. Um, and this could be used to create a whole bunch of things. As an example, here is a topographical lake map of Lake Ontario. Um, I recently stayed, or uh, in the past stayed in a cottage that had uh, a topographical map of the lake that we were on, on the wall, and I thought it was pretty cool. So it could be something that you could create as a, a gift to someone if you owned a cottage. It would be kind of cool. Anyway, uh, that's just one application of this, but I think it's a very cool effect and something we haven't learned how to do in Illustrator yet, so I wanted to teach you how to do it. Here we go. I'm going to create a new uh, workspace. I'm just going to make a 4x4 four four workspace as I often do. Here we go. If I haven't already, I'll zoom to fit on my screen. And we're going to start by creating, um, if, if you look carefully, there's actually a, an outside white layer here, and then each one of these is its own sort of squiggly bit. So I'm going to open up uh, and use my rectangle tool. I'm going to just draw a rectangle that fills the entire outside perimeter of my workspace. And uh, I'll go to Properties here. Uh, it has a stroke on it, so I'm just going to turn that off for now. So no stroke. The fill is white. Okay. Next up, we're going to use the Pencil Tool. Now, you might not see the Pencil Tool on your screen. It might say Paintbrush Tool. Uh, we can use the Pencil Tool by pushing N on your keyboard or just clicking and holding here and going down and choosing the Pencil Tool. So I'll go ahead and choose that. You can use free. You can use the pencil tool to create freeform vectors. So we've looked at creating vectors by adding and subtracting shapes, by manipulating anchor points from primitive shapes. But you can also just freehand draw um, vectors. So we're going to do that right now. It takes a bit of practice, I find. You click and sort of drag around with your hand. I'm just going to kind of make an interesting blobby kind of shape, imagining maybe what a lake might look like. And I actually dropped it, so I'm going to undo and start again. I find it works a little easier if you can do it all in one motion without dropping the pencil. By dropping, I mean like you're clicking and then you accidentally unclick. And then I'll just join it carefully back up to the start. You can see my pencil changes uh, to have that little circle. That means it's going to create a full shape. All right, next up, I'm going to draw another blobby shape uh, similar in shape, but not exactly the same. Smaller and entirely within the border of the first shape. Again, try not to drop it as I go. And you'll see that star beside my pencil changes to a circle as it gets close, means it's going to join up. And the previous shape disappears, but don't be alarmed by that. It's just because it has no fill specified at this point. And so it's okay. Just using it as a reference to the previous one. And maybe I'll make one more. All right. So I have a whole bunch of vectors here. If I look under layers, I can see them all here, all these different paths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by coloring them. It's difficult sometimes to find them because they're invisible. This one's easy to find, but I'm going to go out and I can actually see them all if I just select across the whole space. So I've got my outside square and everything, but I want just this one selected. So I'm going to kind of click out and now I know it's here. So I'll click it. The first thing we're going to do is change its fill. So I'll go to properties over here, click on my fill and uh, let's see. Let's get up some colors and uh, you could do this any color you want but I'm going to sort of use shades of blue so maybe I'll choose a lighter shade of blue to start I can always double click down here once I've chosen this the color and maybe I'll start with a slightly lighter blue like this so I'm going to click here and say okay all right now I'm going to find my next shape I can always just select them all so I can sort of see oh I'll need to click here so I'm going to click away and then a hover. You can sort of see your mouse will change from uh, having a black square to having a whitish square. So I'll click there. We're going to use the dropper tool to select the starting color for this. We're going to, the dropper tool um, 
uses the color from another shape. So I'm going to steal this blue color and now we've colored it the same blue and now I'm just going to double click here and modify that blue. What I'm going to do for me is I'm going to sort of diagonally march down this direction as if it were a lake it would be getting darker and darker blue the deeper you go. All right and I'll do the same thing again. Okay we know it's around here and just kind of clicking till I find the shape. There it is. Dropper tool choose the color, double click, change the color, and repeat until we have all of our shapes. Click, dropper tool, double click, click, okay, and we've got one more in there somewhere, right here. Click, dropper tool, double click, click okay all right so there we go we've created um, our lake now you'll notice that this one has shadows and stuff I'm gonna show you how to do that um, we're gonna learn how to use an, a tool that we've used before but we're gonna use it in a slightly different way and that tools not it's not here on my toolbar or over here we're gonna bring it up um, by going up here and choosing window scrolling down until we find the one called Pathfinder now we have used the Pathfinder tool before in a different way um, to add and subtract shapes, but we're actually going to divide shapes today. And here's how we do it. So I'm going to use my uh, selection tool, not the direct selection tool, the black arrow, the selection tool. I'm going to select everything. So I'm just going to drag across here and make sure I, I get my box to touch every single shape, the outside rectangle and all the blobs inside. I let go, I can sort of see they're all outlined in a darker blue, so I know I've selected them all. And if you have a look here, um, we've got a bunch of different tools. You know, we've got our, we've got crop, we've got all sorts of stuff, but we're looking for the one called divide. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Initially, when you click it, there's not much you see. Um, you know, it, it looks exactly the same. Uh, but what it has done is under my layers here, it's created a group. And within that are all my shapes. And if you can see the tiny, tiny thumbnails, you can, you can see it's divided each shape by every other shape. And let me ungroup them just so I can give you a better sense of what that means. So object, ungroup. And now if I just select one of these, you can see each one is its own weird blob with the previous, the inside part subtracted out. So I'm just gonna undo and put everything back in its original position. Okay, so now we need to have every layer cast a shadow. I don't need this tool anymore, so I can close it. I'm gonna click on my outside blob and I'm gonna do this, effect, stylize and drop shadow. Now here are the settings I've used to do that. So mode is multiply, opacity is 75%, and then X and Y offset I've set to two inches. You can play around with these to see what they do, um, but 0.2 inches seems to be working pretty well for me. And blur, I've got 0 0.02 inches as well. So again, uh, don't be shy, play around, see how it changes things. Maybe there's a setting that you think looks even. Okay, and then I just need to repeat this with every other layer, so I just click it, Effect, stylize, drop shadow. And okay, I'm just gonna keep the settings the same for each one. Stylize, drop shadow, okay. And luckily it remembers the setting each time. Effect, stylize, drop shadow, okay. And I don't actually need to do it to the bottom layer and you'll see why in a second. Now right now this is creating the effect that these shapes are coming up out of the page instead of into the page. Um, and so I want to change that. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here to layers and all I need to do is reverse the order of all my layers. So to find my layers over here, I just click on layers. I expand it with this arrow and then I've got my different layers here and I just drag them into the opposite order. So the bottom most layer, which was our white rectangle becomes the topmost layer. And you kind of see your shadows are going to change as we do this. So I go grab the bottommost layer and drop it just below the previous layer that I have just moved. Drag it up, 
grab the bottom, drag it up to the previous layer, and there's one more. And now you'll see, we're almost done. We've got, it looks now as if each layer is going in deeper and deeper into the page. And finally, I'm gonna click on my uh, shape that was originally a rectangle, and I'm going to add a drop shadow to that as well. Effect, stylize, and drop shadow. And now I'm gonna click okay. And it looks like each piece of paper is cut out of the next. It creates quite a neat 3D effect. It even looks quite convincing on my computer screen here. So it's quite cool. And that's how you do that. So you can do this, like I said, to create things that look like topographical maps or all sorts of interesting things. Here's the previous one I did. Actually, I like the new one better. And you get the idea. So have fun, play around, and try that yourself.